Hey, welcome to Master JavaScript in 16 days by building 16 projects. In this course, we focus on building 16 projects that will take you from beginner to advanced level in JavaScript. Before we go through the projects, I want to talk with you about what you need to enroll in this course. What you just need to enroll in this course is the HTML5. You don't need any CSS experience because we will not be focusing on the CSS. The code of the CSS, you will find it in the source code. You don't need to worry about the CSS because we will not code it together in the videos. And also, you don't need any JavaScript experience to enroll. By the end of this course, you will be having a great ability to build professional JavaScript projects. And now, let's go to the projects. So, this is the first project we have in this course, the stopwatch project. When I click on the start, we will start the interval. And then when I click on the stop, it will stop, start, start again, and reset to set everything back to zero. Again, when I click on the start, reset, and the start again, stop, start, stop, reset. So, this is the first project. Let's go to the second one. So, this is the second project in this course, the alarm system. The first thing it will ask for here is the hour. So, we can make here 23. And for the minute, let's make it uh, 44. For the second, let's make it 0. And when the time is the same as here, this text will change. Here we get the third project in this course, to-do list. When I enter a task right here, it will be printed here. I can add more. And then I can delete what I want to delete from here. Like that. And now, let's move to the fourth one. And this is the fourth project in this course. The random background color. As you can see from here, when I click on change background, there's a random background color that will appear for me. And now, let's move to the next project. Hey, and now, this is the last project for the beginner level. Using the for and the while loop, we will find the difference between two numbers. This one and this one. We got five projects for the beginner level. And now, let's move to the intermediate level. Okay, so this is the first project for the intermediate level. We will learn how we can use add, remove, and toggle the classes. Right here when I click and get pack. This is the purpose of the first project in the intermediate level. How we can add, remove, and toggle. Let's move to the second one. And here we got the second project for the intermediate level. So let's delete this password. And from here, let's click on sign up. Name is required. We can type any name here. Sign up success. Email is required. So I will type any email right here. Success. And finally, the password. Password must be greater or equal to 10 characters. So I need to add more. Sign up. And now it succeed. Let's move to another project. Okay, so this is the third project in the intermediate level, the drum kit. We will know how we can use the functions on the JavaScript to make it more advanced for the projects. And when I click on any Put in from here on the keyboard. So, this is the third project. Let's move to the fourth one. Okay, and now let's talk about this project. The strong password checker. According to the input of the user, we will check whether the password is strong or not. When I click anything right here, and then your password is too weak, and then I can do like that to click on show or hide. And then I can add a number. Your password is medium. And then I can add a symbol, but not yet. I need a length for this password. When I add more, your password is strong. So we will use the JavaScript functions to make this work. And now let's talk about the fifth project in the intermediate level, the parallax hover effect. When I hover anywhere inside this card, we will find this changing like that. Using the JavaScript, we will know how we can make this 
work and also you can apply it to any project you want most people think that animation on scroll is difficult but in this project we will know how we can make more than an animation using the javascript using an easy code like that when i scroll down right here and again and also we will learn how we can add more effects to this scroll the last project for the intermediate level the dice game the idea of this project came from the code pen when i roll the dice and when the input is one it will switch the player like that and when the when the current right here is more than or equal to 100 i will click on hold and it will make me a winner and the background color and the css will change and this will be done all by javascript so we don't need to worry about the css okay so this is the first project for the advanced level the calculator we will know how we can make a calculator using the javascript as you can see from here when i type anything a multiplication and the idea of the project came from the youtube and when i make a division like uh, two three two three five four zero it will get me the result and also when i add here i can delete a character from here in the ac and i can make it like that and it will get me the result let's move to the last project for the advanced level and then we will move to the api okay and here we have the google maps api project in this project we will know how we can use the api to insert the map into our page that's not all we will also learn how we can add markers locations add marker when i click on the map and also we will learn how we can detect our location and print it on the map okay and here the weather app project we will learn how we can find the weather anywhere in the world just by clicking on the search and this is all by using the api and now we're learning the two ways to add the api as the google way and the fetch can't wait to see you in the course let's start our journey welcome to the first video in the stopwatch project in this video we will know how we can target elements and use variables we will build this page and this source code together and here as you can see from here for the div of the class we got this text but here we got a different the same for the ig query and for the ig in this video we will do that with document.quire selector and also with variables so let's go to the folder of videos right here we will create a new folder which is called stop watch okay and then we can go inside this folder and we will create here a new folder and let's call it for explanation and then we will go inside this folder or just drag it inside the visual study code okay that's good and then we will create a new file here and call it what's wrong yeah target elements dot html of course html okay and the first thing we will build here is the html but let's open this file in the firefox or any browser we are using okay let's type here html5 and then right here let's type the css uh, sorry the html code so we are gonna type here dev with class of class and then inside it we can just type i am the query selector for class and then we can make here for the id id query and inside it we can copy this one and paste it here and for the last one we can make for 
the ID of ID and the get element pi ID. Don't focus on this HTML uh, words right here. We're just making it for the JavaScript. And then uh, we can go here to type JavaScript code. We have two ways to do that. We can just type here script and then the JavaScript code will be coded inside or we can make an another way. We can go here and create a new file. This file will be called anything.js like script. The most common name is script. So we can type script.js. This is the JavaScript file. And then we can go inside the HTML file and make here script and here source script.js. And everything we will type here will be go will go inside the HTML file. But we can just delete this right now and use this one, which we can type inside the HTML file. Okay, so the first thing we can do here is to know how we can target the class to target anything inside this document because this is an HTML5 document. So we will type document. Let's first reload this page. We got everything here. And then we will type query selector because here I'm, I am querying and I will select for this query. So I am doing a query and the query is to select something inside this HTML file, which is inside this document. And then we will open a bracket. For this bracket here, we need to separate between the class and the ID, right? In the CSS, we use the dot for the class and the hash for the ID. The same as the JavaScript, we will use a dot for the class and the hash for the ID. So we can just type dot here. And then the class. Now we targeted, we targeted the class, which is called class right here, which is this one. But we need to make sure that we already targeted it. Let's try to do something here. Let's try to change the HTML, the inner text of this class using the JavaScript. To do that, we will make dot here. We can make inner HTML, but I prefer always the text content. And then I'm show you. I'm gonna show you why in the stopwatch project. I will show you the difference between the HTML the inner HTML and the text content and we will make equal to type HTML inside or text or anything inside this one to be replaced here we will make two double quotations and inside the two double quotations we will type the content so we can just type here or we can copy this one and make it works okay Let's try to, ref to refresh the page. Well, it works and it's amazing. Let's now try for the ID. For the ID right here, let's do it again. Document because I will choose something inside this document HTML. And query selector, I want to make a query and the query I want to make is to select something inside the document. And open the bracket, then we can make four the id uh, sorry the quotation first the single quotation and then for the id we will use the hash as i told you id query and then we can use any html or text content but as i told you i prefer text content text content equal we can type this one now sorry we can copy this one and paste it here for ID here and ID works and now let's try to refresh the page well it works then the last one for the document acquire selector is to try to make to, to select the ID but in a different way we can make here document because I want to make a query inside the document 
But instead of typing query selector, we can make get element by the ID. So I will get the element from this document by the ID name. Get element by ID. So the trick here. Do you think we need to type here the hash or not? We already make we already made here get element by ID. So I don't need to specify whether it's ID or class. So we can just type here the get sorry ID. So here I am choosing this one dot text content and let's make it equal let's type here this one and add words reload the page well it works now we are done from making the basic one let's try to do this with the variables and now well sorry the first thing we need to know here what is a variable? Let's say that I will make this one for several operations. So I will use this code line for five or six operations in the JavaScript. So do I need to type this one? Do I need to code all of this line each time I use it? No, we don't need. We can make here var, which is which is stands for the variable, and then. We, we need to give this variable a name to call it when we need it. Let's call it a class variable. Okay, so after this one, we will make equal. So this is the variable and this is the name. Let's make it equal and then we can copy this one. Document that requires a lecture, the class and text content. And then this is good and then we don't need this one because it can be used for several operations so we don't need to limit this one by text content okay so we can go here and make class variable and now we can make dot text content so what did i do here what i did here is just I recalled or I recall this function, which is this variable. I recall this variable, which is equal to this one. And I type it here. What happened here is I put this thing here. Okay, so I hope this is clear to you. And then we can make here the, the, the class VAR works let's test it yeah it works and then let's try to make it for the id for the id but this is a challenge i want you to pause the video and try to do it for the id yourself okay so let's do it together i hope you did it right we can make here a variable let's call this variable something like the id query var and then we can make here document dot query selector because i want to make a query which is selecting something inside this document and here this to be id query and then we can call or recall this variable right here id query variable and let's make it the text content Soon we will know how we can change the CSS and more with the variables. Document. Uh, sorry, we don't need the document here. And here we can make the ID query variable works. Let's reload the page. Well, it works. Now let's try it for the last one, which is get element by the ID. We can make here variable. Let's make it uh, ID variable and let's make it equal document dot get element by ID and this one will be ID and then we can make here the uh, yes the ID variable equal to document no sorry ID dot inner html or text content let's make it text content 
and make it equal id variable works okay so this is good now we are done from the choosing or targeting the elements inside the html file by javascript and also the variables in the next video we will learn more with javascript good luck and see you in the next video welcome to the second video in the stopwatch project in this video we will learn how we can add event listener inside the javascript as an example here add event listener we can give a function of click when i click on something i want something to happen when i hover on something and more like here if i click on change class text this will change the same for the id in the id too let's learn how we can do that together we will create a new file here and let's call it a new file add event listener dot html and inside here we don't need to make here a new code we can just copy this one and make it inside here good and then what we need here we can delete this javascript because we need to make it again together now what we can do here as first we need to get buttons right so let's make the first button here and let's get this button the button with class let's get this class here the button class and then inside this one we can just type here change class text okay that's good let's say this one here reload and let's open this file in the uh, firefox or any browser we are using yeah right here okay that's good and now let's add it for the rg query so we can make here putin and give it a class of uh, putin id query and inside it we can make change id1 text and let's add for the last one we can add here putin uh, sorry not bold it's putin putin and it's closure let's give it a class of the putin id okay that's good and then inside it here we can type change the id to text let's reload the page okay that's good and now we will type the javascript in this video let's try to type this javascript inside a javascript file so we don't need this one let's create a script file here script dot js okay now we need to connect between this see uh, this js file and the html so we can make here script with source and script dot js so everything we will type here will be coded here again but hidden but it would work with the html file so let's go here and type the first thing we need to know here or we need to do is to give variables so let's give the variable for variable query selector class and let's make it equal document dot query selector and we will use the i the class of the class and now let's make a variable for the class we can also make variable for classes of course so let's make var and let's give it a name of putin class putin class and let's make it equal document dot query selector and inside it we will type the the class of this putin 
which was the pudding class so we can just copy this one and paste it here okay this is good and what we can do after this one is to add pudding class now we need to have something here we need to make here when i click on it i want the function to be happened this will be done by adding add event listener and here we will type here what function i want to like something like the click i want to click or hover or mouse over or anything like that i want the click and what I want to happen when I click on this one what I want to happen is a function so I want function to happen and this will this function will be changing the text content of the class so this will be a function and we will type parameters and it will be empty very soon we will learn how we can make it something inside like event and then we will open these brackets and then let's uh, say again what I did here put in the put in class which is document that requires a lecture the put in and then add event listener so add event listener will hold two things the click so I click on the put in yeah this is the first parameter It's true so this state is true what I want to happen else or after the click is a function and the function that I want to happen is changing the text content of this uh, of the something that I will type inside and the thing that we will type inside is this variable so we can make here query the lecture class dot text content and what will be inside here works now yeah it works let's say again what i did here the add event listener so we have here two parameters which is the click and the function the first one needs to be true and then it will move to the second one so let's reload the page the first one here is still false because we didn't click but when we click this will be true and then it will move to the function now yeah the first statement is true so i moved to the second function or the second parameters which is the function of making this one okay this is good now let's try to make it for the query selector id we can here copy this one copy and paste let's make this one id and query selector will be for the id query and let's make here the variable for the pudding we can copy here and paste pudding id or let's make it id query query and here let's copy the class of this one copy and paste it here now pause the video and try to do this add event listener yourself what i want you to do here is to add event listener of click and uh, change the content of this where where yes change the content of this choir selector id by anything you want pause the video and try to do it well now let me hear the Purun ID query and make it add event listener. And here I won't click. And then we need a function, a function. So if the first statement is true, I want you to move to the second parameter, which is a function. Up at the bracket. And here I want to change the text content of the ID query. So we can make here query selector ID. And here it will be text content equal to 
works. Let's reload the page right here. The first one and uh, the second one works and the first one works. Now, this is the time to make for the last one, which is for the get element pi id. Now, we can make here for this part, we can make variable and let's call it get element pi id and we will make it equal to document dot get element pi id and this one will be for the id and let's make a variable for the puddin also for the puddin we can make puddin id and let's make it equal to document dot query selector which was i don't really remember we can copy it from here and paste it here but this will be dot right here because we are children class and then we want to make here put an id dot add event listener and then i want click and then right here we can make four function leave the parameters empty soon we will learn how we can do that in the uh, in the to do list to do list project in this project we will learn how we can fill these parameters okay so here we need to make here get element pi id dot text content to be equal to words let's try it now the first one works the second one works and the last one works so now this is good now we are done from this video which is add event listener in the description of the video you will find a website that shows you everything you can type instead of click like hover and all of that good luck and see you in the next video all right now we will know how we can add content in the javascript like here for example when i click on add hello so it will end the second one the third one and the fourth one until infinity we will know how we can do that and in the next video we will know how we can add interval because it will be used in the stopwatch project like here but yes right here it will count each second let's refresh this page to avoid making the laptop hot okay so here let's type this source code right here let's make here html5 okay we need to get inside this body and inside this body here let's make puddin this puddin will add the hello for this uh, hello text we can give here a class let's give it to add hello inside it we can type add hello and then we will type here dev with class of hello text and inside it we can just type hello okay so this is good now we will type the javascript code we can go down here and type script now i wanted to try to post this video and do here a variable for this one and this one and add event listener for click and leave the function empty because we will try the function together okay i hope you did it good what we can do here is make a variable for the puddin let's make it add hello and let's make it to be equal to document dot query selector and we will choose this one so we can just copy it from here and paste it here and then let's make for the hello text we can copy this one and let's make this text hello let's copy this class and paste it here okay that's good 
And now what we can do is to add a function for the event listener. We can make add hello dot add event listener, which is equal to uh, sorry, not equal the click. And I want a function empty parameters and equal. Okay, so this is good. Now, what we want to do here is to add hello to the word, but let's reload the page. So here we got this one. It doesn't work right now. So we can go here and make add, sorry, the text hello, because this is the one we want to change. Dot text content equal. We need to give here something to the code that tell you I will add hello each time I click on this button. So we can add something like text hello dot text count. It looks like creepy, right? Plus hello. We can leave a space here. Okay, so now it works. But we need to think what happened here. What happened here did something like the Y Y the first state and this will be sorry this to be Y plus one will be equal to the Y the previous state plus hello let's give a space here so let's think about it here the first state here is hello which is this one i want when i click on this function the new state which is y plus one will be equal to the y previous state plus hello so when i click here i got two hellos now this is the initial state which is the present state i want here the next state which is uh, when I click on this one, the next state will be equal the present state plus hello. When I click here again, it works. I hope this is clear to you. Let's say it again. So I want here, let's explain it on this one. This will be the next state. And I want the next state to be equal to the present state plus hello. When I click here, it works. I hope this is clear to you and this is for the adding content. In the next video we will know how we can add intervals in the JavaScript because we will use it for the watch in the stopwatch. Good luck and see you in this video. Okay and now let's make it for the interval. Let's add a button here which when I click on it the interval will start. The class of start interval and the content here will be for start interval and then we can make here def with class of seconds because the content of this class will be changed when I click on this button because we will type the interval in this class okay so here we need to set a variables the first variable that we will set is variable s and we don't need to type here equal to something we can set this later and this will be posted here when i click on this button because this will be the interval okay so then we can make variable counter and this will be the interval this will be the one which is posted and this will take the function of the interval okay so then we can make here the uh, document dot query selector no we don't need document query selector because we get the button here in the variable so we can add here the we didn't set a variable for the button yeah and also for the seconds so let's make here the variable start interval 
in this second one will be and this will be equal to document dot query selector which is for this student so we can just copy this one right here and paste it here and then we can copy this one var seconds copy this class and paste it here okay so this is good now we will make an event listener for the start interval so start interval dot add event listener the click the function and then we will type something here that I want to start the interval then, right? So we will set the counter. There's a function which is called set interval. And this would be the one that set interval. I want to set interval. And the function that I want to be set, which is we will call it something like run seconds. So this function, I want it to be run and I want it to run each 1000 milliseconds. So what happened here? I here, I made an interval, which is this variable and I made it equal to set interval that I will play the function or run the function several times. And I want the function to run each 100 seconds, uh, 100 milliseconds that's what the code means and then we will make here a function for this one function which is the uh, this one we can just copy it to avoid making mistakes in typing and leave the parameters empty and open the bracket and here we will make document dot query selector which is the, uh, oh, we have a variable here, I'm sorry. The where, 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 the seconds. Yeah, the seconds. Dot text content to be equal to S plus one. And then we will make here S equal to S plus one. And then here, this is the next state. This is the present state. And this will be the number that will be added. So if we are adding number, we don't need to add here quotations. But if we add in text, we need to type the quotations. But uh, the variable of s doesn't get its uh, equal right now. So we can make here equal to zero. Okay. And then that's what happened right here so what we can do after this part is run here i hope everything here is clear to you and then we can start the interval and i hope we have no problem okay it works yeah and that's good but we get a problem here let's try to click on this one for several times it will run like crazy, right? So we need to get a function here. If it is already set, do not touch it. But if it's not set, touch it, right? So we can make here something like if function. So if the statement is true, go inside. And if that statement is not true, don't go inside. We can make if, and soon we will learn about if and else and more if and then right here there is this mark which is not this in the source code is equal to not which is not counter so i'm gonna tell you something the counter if something is set like i uh, let's reload the page i clicked on this one so this turned it to true which is in the code is equal to one but i didn't i didn't click on it yet so it's equal to false which is zero and this code means here if it's not true if counter is not true so this is the not and it's the counter which is the true state which which is 
not counter which means the counter is not equal true so here I will set a function and cut this one and make it equal to here and now let's say the code again the start interval at event listener click and function that's easy in here if not counter which means the counter is not set or not true i want this to happen i will set it to true but if it's not true uh, sorry if it's true do not touch it and do not go inside here uh something like uh, neglect this one and go to this one if the counter is true so let's go here and now let's try to do it let's click several times now nothing sting nothing changes right here and this is the trick of the set interval now i must show, i'm gonna tell you something right here what we can do here we have here s equal s plus one instead of typing s equal s plus one we can just type here s plus plus which is equivalent to s equal s plus one let's try it okay okay so this is good and it works good and when i click several times nothing changes and this is about the set interval because we will use it for the hour inside the uh, stopwatch project in the next video we will learn more about the basics of the javascript good luck and see you there okay and now in this video we will learn about return which is a function that we will use in the stopwatch project so the first thing we can do here we can go after this one and let's add something here like uh, the hello text right here yeah let's make it hello text and then we can go deeper right here and let's give here the return function so we can give a function here and call it function of try return okay that we will type here i want when i call a function something to happen so i think we don't need all of that so let's try to delete it and soon we will use it okay so we can make here return i want to return something which is the testing return okay so let's try to g refresh the page nothing happened right because here we didn't set something to change it in the text content of course yes so we can do here text hello and make it to be equal to a uh, sorry dot text content text content so i want to change the text content for the text content for the advantages of the text content over the in an html we can call or recall the function inside the text content but in the inner html we cannot do that that's why i prefer the text content we can make here try return and now we recall the function to happen inside here the text content of the uh, uh, the try the text hello i want to recall this function which is getting everything inside the function of try return which can be typed inside the text content of this one and now let's try refresh the page it works right but you might say that this is the only thing inside the function so naturally or something like it will be already tied inside because this is the only thing inside this function i'm going to show you something right here we can go here and copy all of that from here to here okay copy it it's easy right and paste it here okay so now let's reload the page it works because this is the only thing that I want to return. What what I type inside the return is the only thing will be typed inside the text content when I recall the function. And I hope this is clear to you. 
now that's all that that's all what we need to do before we start the stopwatch project from the next video we will start coding the stopwatch project so good luck and i hope you have fun with the project and now let's try to make it for the project itself this is the page that we will build i added here the css so you don't need the css right here because let's copy the css yes and make it here because this course doesn't focus on the css we just need the javascript here and we need to understand the html before we type the javascript so we will type the html together but the css is here okay so let's start with the html we can make here html5 and here link for the css okay and then let's go deeper to the body let's make the container which will contain everything inside this uh, timer or stopwatch and let's give it a class at the time and this will be holding the the time of the stopwatch inside which is the time let's make it zero 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 that will change when i click on the start or stop or reset like here okay so now let's make here for the the options we can go here and give it for the options okay and for the options we have the start stop and reset so we can make put in put in and give it a class of the start and here to be start and then for the stop put in with class of stop and here we will type stop and for the last one we can type for the reset so we can make here put in with class of reset in the same way here okay so let's check out the page right here the same as this one right okay that's good and then what we can do right here is to type the javascript code and in this video we will just make for the start we can make here script okay and then after this one we need to set variables one for the milliseconds one for the second and one for the uh, minute because when the millisecond is uh, something like comes to 100 i want to increase in second and when the second is more than uh, 60 or equal to 60 i want to increase the minute by one right so we will set a variable of milliseconds equal zero and here I don't need to make another uh, another line to make for the second. I can make something different right here. Let's just delete this line. We can make comma. And after the comma, we can make the second equal to zero. And the minute is equal to zero. So these are the initial states of the milliseconds, seconds, and the minutes. Okay, and then we can make a variable for the counter the same as we did for the last video and then after this part we will make the uh, the variables for the three buttons right here the start the stop and the reset let's make here the button or variable with start which equal to document dot query selector the class of the start and then for the reset we don't need to type all of that again we can just copy this one paste reset reset and for the last one for the stop stop and stop okay let's make this one here okay and then after this part i want when i click on the button of the start i want the interval to start right so we can make here 
for the start. We can make here for start dot add event listener. And this will be click because I want to when I click. So if the click is true, I want function to happen. What function I want to happen, which is starting the stopwatch. And then right here, we can make for function and call it run because this function will happen and inside this function is a function so normally it will happen right okay and as this part we can make here the content of the time document dot query selector which is the time or let's make it simple and give it a variable var time equal to this one okay that's good and then what's inside it here we will make here the time dot text content the time dot text content right here will be equal to the minute plus we can add plus here if we want to add more than we need to add variables and content right so we can add plus right here this one i told you before this is for the text and if we want to add a variable we don't need to add quotations right here plus the seconds plus this one and the last one will be for plus the milliseconds right this is good and now I want to increase the milliseconds by one right so let's make here ms plus plus but before we do that we need to give here set interval the yes, counter equal set interval the interval here will be the function of run and I want this to run each 100 or let's make it to 10 milliseconds 10 milliseconds here which is equivalent to one milliseconds in real life okay so i want this function to run each 10 or each 10 each milliseconds okay and then what we can do here we need to think about it right we want here the seconds will not read itself right but the second increase when the milliseconds is equal to 100 right so in the milliseconds is equal to 100 i want to increase the second by one that's what we will do right here if the milliseconds equal to 100 because it will increase from increase from the 99 to 100 right if it's equal to 100 I want to set pack the milliseconds to be equal to zero and I want to increase the second by one milliseconds equal to zero. Oh, I'm going to tell you something here. Yes. Why did I use M as equal equal? That's because if I make it here equal, I'm not comparing this one to be uh, not comparing the milliseconds to the 100 i'm telling it i want the milliseconds to be equal 100 but when i make it double equal i am comparing the milliseconds to 100 so if the milliseconds equal to 100 if i type it like that i want the milliseconds to be equal to 100 by this form i am comparing it to the 100 and i want here the second to be increased by one okay so this is good and now let's try to do it start yeah it works right and now what we can do after this one let's reload the page and then we need to make the same but for the seconds if the second is equal to 60 because the minute got 60 seconds, right? I want something to happen. What I want to happen is the second to be equal to zero and the minute to be minute plus one. And the initial one is zero, right? So let's try to test this one. 
by clicking on the start. Okay. Uh, we gotta wait for six seconds. I'm sorry about that, but this is the time. Okay, we're just waiting. I'm sure it works, but let's just wait. Okay. It takes a lot of time. But it's okay right now. Okay, okay, okay. It's about 35 minutes. In this time, you can just make for the... Uh, yeah, we did it already for everything. So we don't need to make it game. But there's something that I hope you noticed that we will make it after this reaches after this reaches one minute. Okay, we are waiting. Just seven seconds. It's not a problem. Okay, eight, nine, and zero. Yeah, it works. We did it right. But there's something here. When I click on the start, it will run like crazy, right? So what we can do here is the same as we did before. If counter if not counter, which it says counter is not true, I will play this. But if it is true, I don't need anything to happen. So let's try to do that. When I click on the start, it works. But when I click again and again and again and again, nothing happened. So this is the one. In the next video, we will be done from this project by adding the uh, the stop and the reset. So good luck and have fun. Yeah, I want you to try to do it yourself. To do it, we need to set the counter equal to false, and we need to to clear the interval. This is the tricky. And if you can if you can't do that, you can search on Google or watch the next video if you want good luck with this one okay and now this is the time to add for the reset and for the stop let's start with the stop we can go after this one after this function and let's make here the stop dot add event listener okay that's good and what we want to do after this one we can just make it here because there's a function in the JavaScript which is called stop. So this will be read it as this will be read as the function of the stop, not a variable. So stop timer. Okay, copy and paste it here. And then we will make it for the click function. Open the parameters. And let's go deeper inside. I want something to happen here, but I'm gonna show you something. When I click here, I need to clear the interval because there's something above here which says I will run the function each 10. So we want to clear that, right? So we can type here clear interval and I want to clear interval. What interval do, we, do you need to clear? The counter. So the clear the interval the clear the interval that runs this function each ten, right? I hope this is clear to you. So we did that, right? But I want to show you something here. Let's test it first. Start, stop. It works, right? Yeah, and this is good. And now when I click on the start, it doesn't work. Think about it. Think about why this is happening. I'm tell you. We give here if the counter is not set, but it was already set in this function. But this function cancelled it. So I told you before, if the function is set, it will be equal to true. But if it's not set, it will be equal to false. So we need to set here this one to be equal to false. So when I click again on the start, it will start again. So let's make here the uh, the what where is yeah the counter the counter where's the counter? It's not here yet. Counter to be equal to false. So let's test it again. 
start stop start stop start stop start stop start start yeah okay so when i click on the start several times nothing changes okay so this is for the stop timer let's make it now for the reset now let's make it for the reset timer also because there's a function which is called a reset okay so reset timer add event listener okay i'm showing you something right here if i type uh something like anything right here like dot 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 and i make here for the click in function let's leave the function empty and go to the firefox reload it doesn't work right let's go here and make the screen larger click on inspect let's make the screen smaller in google chrome it will be at the right and in the google chrome console will be here okay but in the firefox it's here click on the console it tells you we get a problem and the line that causes the problem which is line 51 it tells you have a problem here uncode syntax error expected expression got two three dot uh, or three dots so this is the line 51 it tells you there's a problem which is three dots or one two three didn't read this as a problem but it's okay and we will delete also this one okay so let's reload the page now it works this is a property that you can show the error if you don't find the error in your source code okay so now what we want to do here is to clear interval of the counter because i don't want this function to be run each 10 again right clear interval of the counter counter and then we can make for the counter to be equal to false now reset but it's not zero right we need to make this equal zero because the reset gives everything again to zero so what we can do here is to make for the uh, the ms to be zero To be zero and also for the s to be zero and the minute to be zero okay so this is good let's try now the start i want to stop stop reset oh it doesn't work we got a problem what is the problem right here okay okay i think we got something here I think we didn't refresh the page. No, it doesn't work. So let's think about the problem right here. Okay, okay, okay. I think this might be yes, because we didn't tell here I want to change the text content of this one. So let's make it here something different, okay? Uh, let's make here for the uh yeah 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 for this one right here copy and paste reset yeah it works okay so this is good in the next video we will add the return to this project which is return the uh, what's inside the function that that i called return to be typed in this text content we will do that in the next video. Good luck and have fun. Okay, and now this is the time to add the return. I want you to try to do it yourself before you start this video. Okay, so let's do it together. The return is I will make a function. Function. And inside it, I will call a name like uh, current time leave the parameters empty and make it to return return inside the return we can type more than just a text like this we can type variable also 
so we can make here minutes plus this one plus seconds plus this one and plus milliseconds okay so instead of this one we can just copy this one right here make it equal current time and the same as here current time let's right now start it works the stop works reset works in the only and also if i type it from here okay so this is good and now we are done from the project of the stop vote in the next video we will move to the alarm system as you can see from here the alarm system i type the hour the minute and the second and then it will type here that i set and the time will count and when the time is up the the sound will be run which is the alarm okay so i want you to try to do it this is the same as the the same concept as the stopwatch but there's something different we are using here the date function from the javascript this will be explained in the next video and then you will take a challenge to build this uh, this uh, project yourself so good luck and see you in the next project okay and now let's start our project for the alarm system the first thing we will do here is add a file and call it index.html okay and we will open this file here and instead of this one of course no not this one uh yeah it's here okay and here right now let's make for the html as first so we can make html5 and inside the html5 we can make the first one is for the container okay and then the current time okay this is good and then the alarm time alarm time okay and now we can make for the one which is called alarm and this is perfect right okay and let's type here something like not yet okay there will be a challenge here in the end of the video but let's say something right here because i need to explain some things before you do this challenge okay the first thing i want to explain right here is how to check the input from the user using the alert from the javascript i can set here a variable a variable which is let's make a variable for alarm hour okay and make it to equal to window this window the whole window dot prompt this one this one will be here the window which is this window i want a prompt to be an input from the user so let's make here the enter the hour okay so let's test it let's just make this to be o not p again reload the page now enter the hour let's make it 77 for example yeah it works but we need to make sure it works so let's make here document dot query selector for the alarm dot text content to be equal to a hour let's try this one right now six for example yeah it works and now we can make it also for the alarm minute and second but this is not the problem right now because this is not the challenge of course this is so easy for us now we can make here 
a function now I will tell you how to get the hour of now which is the now date we can make here the uh, function which is for the current date now let's go inside we can make here there's some things instead of variables we can use variables we use it when we want to change the content of the variable but there's something that sometimes we don't need to change the content of it so we can just use constant or let to type constant we can make const so this states for the constant and let's make it equal to d letter or alphabet equal to new date so it gets the date of now and print it so this will get the date of now which is the now time but there's a lot of inside the date like milliseconds minute second hour day year or anything like that so we need to specify what we really need inside it we can make here uh, and instead of constant we can make also let so let's try here let and now hours to p equal to d dot get hours so now we are getting the hours okay and for the minutes let minutes to be equal to d dot get minutes and for the last one for the seconds and let seconds to be equal to d dot get seconds okay this is good and now what I want to do here, this is the time for the challenge. I want you to take the input from the user. Uh, I will type all the inputs so it will be easy for you then. Alarm hour and uh, alarm minute. And the, the alarm second. Okay, so this is good. And this will be for the minute. And this will be for the second. Okay, so this is good. And now what we want to do here or what I want to do to do here is to take the input from the user. And if the input is equal to the real time, print something like yes or change the html of this one or the text content of this one but i want you to search from something on google because this will be the perfect exercise as you know the perfect exercise when you search for something but we will also explain it in the next video of course okay i want you to search for two somethings how to stop the function for a certain time and how to use uh, the more than a statement in the f in the last project we said if milliseconds equal to 100 right i want to make here if the hour of the if the alarm hour is equal to the real hour and the alarm minute is equal to the real minute and the alarm seconds is equal to the real seconds i want to change the text content of the alarm so you will search for two, two things right here for stopping the function for a certain amount of time and how to make several statements inside the if function this will be the uh, the challenge so in the next video this will be the solution to this challenge good luck and see you in the solution okay and now this is the time for the solution the first thing i want to do here is to go to the original file which is the demo and paste the css here okay and now the first thing we need to do here is to make sure it shows me the right time 
So let's commit this one to comment something in JavaScript. We can make slash star the same as here. And this is the closure. This is a comment right now. So this is not applied in the code. Okay. So we will change the content of this one. So let's make here document dot require selector to be equal to the, uh, the class of the alarm dot text content and this one will be equal to the hours plus two dots plus minutes plus this one and the last one for the seconds oh we forgot the plus right here okay it doesn't actually work why because this is inside a function what if i delete the function right here it will work but this is not this is now inside a function so it will not work i need to recall the function outside this function to make it work something like current date so i recall this function so i want the same inside the function to be happened but the same as it happened outside here so something like i typed the code here but i want it to also run here and now it works and give, it gives me the time but when i reload it will give me a different time each second but there's something here when i leave it without refreshing the time will not change so how will the code reads that the real time is equal to the alarm time and this is the thing that we need to make we can make here something here after this one here set time out which is i want to stop a function for a certain amount of time the current date and i want to stop it for i want to stop it for one second so what do, what does this mean and how will i make it run again i'm gonna show you how here i make it the constants right and the document requires a lecture to change the text content and this is the thing that we need to understand this here i will start the function for 100 seconds well it works and then i will go outside this function oh we got a current date so i will go back to this function and run it and then yeah 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 oh yeah i did that i did that i did this line oh you get a current date again so i will rerun this one again so this will stop for 100 seconds and when it will stop for 100 seconds it will go here and oh i got a current date so i will rerun this one so let's reload the page and see what we can do now okay and now it works and now this is the time for the if statement we can make here if and up the brackets and inside the f we can make an another bracket if the alarm hour which is taken from the user is equal to because i am comparing it to the real hour equal to hours and the alarm minute where is it? yeah we deleted it already is equal to the alarm minute is equal to the minutes and then the last one for the alarm seconds equal to the seconds and this is the end here okay and i'm gonna show you the or also and the a the a seconds is equal to the seconds so i want something to happen if i want to make it or instead of and this will be the or okay so what is the difference between or and and here the and the all statements need to be true must be true but if it's or if one statement if only one statement is true i will go inside the f code okay this is the difference and here right now we can make here for the document 
dot query selector i will change the uh, where the uh, the text content of the alarm right here so here let's make this one to be for the current time so let's copy this here and let's make this one to be alarm time and we will make it also here the document requires a lecture we can copy this one paste it here and this will be for the alarm time and let's copy this here no 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 this one a hour a minute which are token from the user okay so now document acquire selector for the alarm to change the text content to p equal to time is over okay so let's try to do it it's now 156 let's make it 157 and 8 seconds or 6 seconds okay so when it comes to 57.6 seconds it will run through and this will change so let's wait it's just about a half minute okay I hope you understand everything in this course and everything is clear I hope just waiting a lot of seconds is okay 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 we are waiting I hope this will work okay oh 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 yeah it works okay and this is good and here okay okay it's working good and we got no problem with that and the time continues of course and this is good and now we are done from the project of the alarm in the next video or for the next project we will do for the to do list as you can see from here if i want to add anything it will be added and also i can delete the purpose of this to do list is to know how we can use append child so the purpose for the stopwatch let's open the file here the purpose of the stopwatch is to use how we can use is to know how we can use variables and also for the functions and the reset in the true and false and all of that the purpose of this alarm is to know how we can use uh, the time and how we can use if statement as more advanced and the purpose of the uh, the to do list is to know how we can append the child and also how to fill the parameters of the function in the next video we will start coding the examples or the explanation for the to do list good luck and have fun okay and now let's build a project for the to do list the purpose of this project is to know how we can use append child okay so let's go and type the html here is the css we need to type the html so the first thing we can type here is form we don't need the action so we can just leave it empty and then inside the form because we get a form to be submitted with the class of the submit sorry the button of the submit so here we need an input an input with a type of text we can just give with yeah let's give the id let's type it again let's give it the id of input because it will be submitted and then let's make a placeholder for enter a task okay and then inside we can make for the submission button so we can make button with the type of the submit and for inside we can type submit let's go and see what we have here okay this is good we can give it the class of submit also okay good
yeah the bar is good now okay so this is perfect and then what we will do after this part is to add the list the list that everything we will type will be inside so this is the list and this will give you the the class of list okay this is good we will leave it empty for now as you can see from here when i type anything it will be added here okay so now let's move to the javascript we can go here and make script and we don't need the source as uh, we don't need the source here let's make it constant instead of variables let's delete this line this space i don't like this space already okay form to be equal to document dot query selector now there's something tricky here we didn't give it we it would we gave it neither class nor id so we don't need to type it we can just type form and it will look the tag which is called form and we have only one and then the constant for the input document equal to document dot query selector for the input it can be single quotations double quotations it doesn't matter for this one const list and this one will be equal to document dot query selector and this one will be equal to the ul okay so now we chose or selected everything we need and now let's go inside i want something that will happen when i click on the submit so actually we don't need this type because it will be submitted from the javascript so here form dot add event listener and submit i want a function to happen now i want to show you something right here that when i go and click here look at here okay when i click the page is reloaded and i want to prevent this reloading because if i reload the memory will be deleted and what i typed or submitted will not be saved and will not be printed here so we can fill the parameters let's make here events or let's make it e it will be easier okay so what did i do here let's type first here e dot prevent default okay so i'm gonna show you something here and what did i do what i did here is each one i submit will get something like the id like this one will take the id one and the second one will take the id two and the third one will take three so when i click on the delete i will delete just i clicked on for the button for the delete and without this it will delete all of the inputs but when i add a it will give an id to this input and for each input it will give it an id and so when i click on the delete it will delete just what i want to delete and also right here it will prevent default as i did here prevent default so what i did here add event listener on the submission i want this to happen e dot prevent default for the input that i put right but what is the default the default after the submission is reloading the page but i don't want to reload the page so i give e and e here for the input that i put which is the id of the input and prevent default the default after the submission okay so i will prevent the default after the submission and the default is what is reloading the page but i will stop that so let's reload the page here so as you can see from here there's no reloading i hope this is clear to you and here uh, the name of the function will be to do so I will call the function here and then we will type it okay and input dot value to be equal to nothing so I want to set variable pack let's type anything here it doesn't go pack yet yeah now when you refresh the page it works 
but without this one it will not sorry we didn't refresh the page it will not go back okay this is good we need to make this first save okay reload save okay uh, what's the problem yeah the to do yeah and now it works let's get back to to do because here it finds a problem i don't have a function of to do what i want me to do okay so now what we did after what we did now and what we will do is to add a function of to do so let's add this function right here function and the name will be to do open the brackets and here we don't need uh, a parameters right here because the function will not give an id the id will be taken from the input so the input will give the id for the list item and then right here we will use the input if and else function so if the the input dot so i want to integrate the value of the input the value of the input will be indicated by the constant of the input dot value which is the value which is inside this input if now what do you think we will type it like that no we will type three equals because i am comparing it to a text and not a number okay so now and now we can make an alert and for the alert it will be the value is empty for an example let's reload the page right here yeah the value is empty it works fine okay otherwise we can make here do you think here we can type if the input is not empty or what do you think we can add oh in case if you want to type if it's not empty you can just make here not okay and we will learn this very soon in other projects okay so now we can make second or another solution for this one else so if it's not true if it's not true else so i will do something else and also we can make else if so if i have three three something like three conditions if input value dot value is equal to yes and then i want something to happen i will copy this one we can just make it different okay we load the page let's make this one yes the value is y and if i leave it empty it will be the value of empty okay good and now we don't need this one really now we will make a constant a constant of value and we will make it equal to the input dot value input dot value okay and then we can create here a constant of new we will call it new list so what i want to what i want to happen here is when i click on the submission and it has text already so i want to create element here because li is an element so i want to create a new element each time i add an input but i want to make it from the javascript right so there's a function in the javascript which is called document dot create element i will create an element create element what element do you want to create i want to create the element of li this is the same as we we went here and add li but from the javascript because we want to add li for each time we submit okay so we can just add some comments here okay 
we can add here creating li element each time we submit okay this is good and here after this part we will add for the text content because i want to change the text content of the value the text content of the value will be the new list so here sorry i want to change text content of the new list sorry i'm sorry so here new list dot text content i want to change the text content of the new list and make it equal to what you think i want to make it equal the value that i submitted which is this one right here value so okay let's do that yeah uh reload the page it doesn't work yet okay it's okay we can just move on because there's something that we didn't add but it's okay let's make here the uh a comment for adding the value of the input to the l i and here i want to tell you why it's not working we added here an li right but we didn't add where i want to put this li right that's why it doesn't work okay so now we can add a comment right here and this comment will be for adding the uh, delete button so we can just add a comment here adding the delete button okay this is good and here we can make a constant for delete button and this will be equal to document dot i will create a new element also which is the button in this case create element which is the button okay and after this part what we want to do here we want to change we want to change the text content of this button so let's add a comment here changing the content of the button okay and here we will make delete button dot text content to be equal to delete okay good and then after this part what we can do we can just uh, okay we can give here for the button but let's make this one to be here 10 pixels this will be for any button okay it's good also it's okay okay this is good and now what we want to do here is to add the li we want to add this li inside this ul and this one will be done by adding append in the javascript so let's know how we can do that let's add a comment here as first and this one will be for adding the li inside the ul okay and then after this part we will make list dot append so what i'm doing here i am going to the constant of the list which is document dot query selector ul and append append means i want to add something inside here so this is the list which is the constant and append the append i will i will add something here and then it tells me what you want to add i want to add the new list okay and then the new list right here it get a text content of value but let's stay here so it works right but 
the delete button is not here. Now I want to I want to challenge you now. I can add list append, right? But I can add more than a variable. I can add text, I can add anything. I don't need to add exactly an element. I can add also text because it will be added here. Right? Because append means I will add something inside. It doesn't limit me by adding elements. I can add also text. So, I want to challenge you here. I want you to add the button of the delete button right here. Pause the video and try to do it yourself. Okay, and now let's do it together. We can make this one. A comment right here, adding the delete button. Okay, so now we want to append something inside the new list, which is this one. So here, new list dot append because when I append inside it, I want to append what? I want to append a text, which is the HTML and for the delete button. So we can make single quotation here and leave it empty. Just type space inside it to make a space between this text and the delete button. And here we can make for the delete button. Okay, and now let's try to test this one right here. When I click on G, it gets G. And when I get H, get H. And when I get S, it get S. Okay, and when I make the screen larger, yeah. And now it works fine. And we get no problem with it, right? And this works. We can delete the space if we need, but it's not necessary. It's good right here. Okay, so now it works. Now we are done from this part. In the next video, we will learn how we can make this delete button work. Because here we get the submit, but it's not working very well. So we need to make this. We will do that in the next video. Good luck and have fun. Okay, and now let's add for deleting the item. We can go here after this one. Let's add some space. Let's add a comment here. And another way to add a comment in the JavaScript is add two slashes. But it will just come this line. It will not come in this line. I will just be commenting this line. For deleting. Okay. So let's make it here. What I want to do here is make list dot add event listener because I will click on something for the list click so I will click on the list right so here the list which is where where this one I will click on the ul so here I will make a function of E. because each e we submitted there has something like the id right so i want when i click on this one this will be deleted i don't want to delete all and then if if the e which is the id of the one we submitted the id that we want to be deleted target this means here that the target which is the click if e dot clicked has the node name which is equivalent to the uh, element name but in the uh, javascript three equals and this one also reads the uppercase so we will type the uppercase but it will be read as as we read it as the lowercase okay so i want to tell you again what i did here if E, which is the ID that we want to be deleted, target. Target means I clicked on it. And the node name that the, you know here it has an ID. So I gotta target it, okay? This is the target when I click on it. If the node name of the thing that I targeted at is button, I want something to happen. Okay, so what do you want to happen? I want E, which is the ID of something that we want to delete dot target dot closest 
closest here means I want to find here. Let's make it closest. Li is equal. Also read the Li. So I want to target the closest Li, which is what is in the closest Li here. As you can see from here, this has the Li of something in the button, right? So what do you think is near? It will get the list item that for this one. Dot, there's something a function here is remove. So I want to remove it. Let's try here. Okay, J, H, H, sorry, D. Okay, uh, let's make something different. Okay. Now, when I click here, it will be deleted and it works fine. And I hope this is clear to you. If you have any problem, you can ask in the Q&A. So now we are done from the to-do list. In the next video, we will build also an amazing project, which is, I'm gonna show you the project right here, the random background color. So I will be having a list of the colors, but when I click on the, uh, the button, I want to change the background of the color, the background color by a random color so something like here i get a pig list okay and then uh, when i click when i click this on this button i want to change the css of the body and i want to change i want to change the background inside the css to be taken as a random color from this list this will be done in the next video using the arrays so good luck and have fun Okay, and now we will build the project for the random background color. The first thing we will add here is the HTML. So we can add here with class of container. Actually, we don't need the space, we can delete it. And also the space. Okay, so what we can just type inside here is H2 with the pack, the recent pack ground color is and then we can make span because we will change the text content of this pen so let's make here class let's give it a class of uh, color color is okay color and then inside it we can type anything we can just leave it empty for now or let's make it something like uh, uh, yeah, we can make it for red, for an example. Okay, and let's give here the body background color to red. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, and now we will give it this one to be color of white. Color of white. And okay, that's good. Okay, so now after this part, let's say also, okay, we don't focus on the CSS. And after this part, let's add the button that will change the background color when I click on it. Let's give it a class of change. And now we can make it for change the pack ground color okay so we got it here we just need to change its uh, where the color the color of white okay good okay and then what we can do after this part is to add the javascript now so let's go after this dev and add the javascript script now, there's something that we add, we can add here, it, which is called array. We can make here constant because the array is constant. And now let's call it colors. And now to make an array, these brackets are used. And then we can type more than something inside the array. The green, which will have the ID of zero and the red, 
will be have the ID of one. And let me this one to be for ex an example of for the uh, blue. We got something wrong here. Okay, it's always a problem. And now the last one, let's make it for green. And let's make another one here, which is for the something like orange. Okay, what did I do here? What I did here, I made an array which has a several data and each data has its ID. This one has zero, one, two, three, four. So the first one is zero and the last one is n minus one. So now zero, one, two, three, four. This is the starting of n, this is the ending of the numbers. Okay, and now I'm gonna show you how we can do that. Let's add a div here, which will be useful for us now. Let's make dev, or let's make it inside this one. Dev with class of test. Okay, let's make here document dot query selector. I will select the test. Okay, and now for this one, I want to change the text content and I want to select something inside this array to be typed inside this one. So I will make here, I want to select something from the array which is called colors, right? So I will call the colors and now it tells me which one do you want to choose? You want to, change, to choose zero or one, two, three, or four. So I'm gonna choose for zero. And then it got me green. If I choose one, it will get me the one, the two, okay, the three, the four, what if I type five? It gives me nothing because I don't have the five, right? So now we know how the array works and we get no problem with that, right? Let's, low, let's now learn how we can change the CSS from the JavaScript, okay? And then we can make here document and party because the party is inside this document right here document and then the party so the party is inside this document now i want to change its style there is a property in the js which is called style and then we will add dot it tells me now what do you want to change in the style i want to change the peg ground okay but uh, just the background the background color and also the uh, the visual studio here the visual studio code gives you an amazing an amazing suggestions for the uh, css styling and now i want to make it equal and now i want to change its css with something inside this array so we can make colors and choose something from inside. Let's choose the one. So now uh, we got something here why it's not working. Okay, okay, okay. Let's check out the problem right here. Let's delete this one. I think this might be the problem. No, it doesn't work. So we got a problem here. Let's search for the problem. Yeah, document party dot style i believe we got the problem here and we need to search for the problem okay 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 style so what is the problem we need to search for the problem right here the colors okay i believe right here what is the problem? We don't even have the CSS right now. Yeah, yeah, it's working. We deleted it already because the one is the red. 
let's try to give it back its CSS. Oh, it was the red and we chose the red from the array. I'm sorry. Let's now choose the zero to make sure it's already working, which is the green. It's supposed to be green right now. And then the four. And now this is true and working true. And now we are done from this part. But this is not be chosen random, right? In the next video, we will know how we can make it random using the math random and the math floor. So good luck and have fun. Okay, and now let's talk about the math random and the math floor before we apply it in the code. When we go here, let's type something, something like uh, math or console log. We will print it in the console. That's how we can do that. Console log. And then right here, we can make here the math dot, dot random. And we need to know what's happening here. It will give me a random color, a random number, sorry. So if I go here and inspect the console, we get a number. When I reload the page again, we get a different number. So each time it will give me a different number. And now, but it's also a less than zero and we don't want that, right? So what is the solution here? If only I can, if only I can get the length of this one and to be printed by multiplication here. So each time I get a random, it will be multiplicated by the length of this one. And then I will get a higher than zero and a random number between this to this. So this is a problem, right? So there is a function in the CSS, which is in the JavaScript, sorry, which is getting me the length of this array. To do that, we can make console dot log and make it equal to and to be printed colors dot length. So I will get the length of the colors. So the length is five. One, two, three, four, five. Right. And what if I take this one and make the multiplication right here? Multiplied by the color that length, which is five. So we got this number, this number. So each time we don't, we don't have to get zero, right? But we got a problem here also. Will the array read this decimal number? Of course not. So we want to make it just to end only for the first digit. To do that, we will add math dot floor. Let's add a bracket here because the math floor and the bracket and then math floor. Okay. So let's delete this. We don't need it now. Reload the page. So we got zero, 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 three, zero, four, one and a random, right? Because it's multiplication it by the color length and then I am taking the first digit which is before the dot and then what we want to do here instead of this one is to change this one is to change the background by this one so we can just copy this and make it here okay this is good but instead of typing it here because we will use it for a second time or I think two try uh, twice okay so we can give a function right here, the random, random color, the, the parameter is empty. And then we can take this one to be here, but with return, because we will return this one when we recall the function. Okay. So here random color we don't need this console log again now let's test this one so red 
the red which is the basic one it doesn't want to change so here okay let's try to console dot log okay and then what we want to do here is to make okay okay yeah 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 we don't need to change it by this one we need to choose something from the colors this was the problem i'm sorry about that so the colors and the id of the thing inside will be the random uh, color that will be printed from here so when i go here green orange red and m more okay and now we want to change the text content of the test or we don't need this we want to change here the text content of the color so to prevent typing this one several times we can make here a constant okay okay where a constant which is equal to let's make it variable because it will be changing variable of the final color and let's make it equal to this one final color and let's see if it's working yeah it's working and then we want to change the text content of this one to p4 this one so here we can make for the variable var with color and this one will be for the uh, yeah 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 where color okay yes equal to document dot query selector for the color okay this is good and then we can call the color dot text content to be equal to this one or equal to the final color final color let's test this one yeah it's working good and now but we don't want this to happen each time i reload right i want this to happen each time i click on the button this button so let's set a variable for this button var button equal to document dot query selector the class of the change okay this is good and now let's give here the button dot add event listener the click and this one will be for the uh, function i want a function to happen right and inside this function what i want to happen is this one so let's copy this part all of that and to be pasted here so no we got a problem right here okay let's get, get this also here yes and now we get a problem with this part okay so we need to check the problem oh we didn't click here <laughs> yeah now it's working and we got no problem with that and the project is working now this is done i hope everything is clear to you i will add some comments here to make it more clear to you when you read the source code okay and now we are done from this part in the next video and now we are done from using the arrays right in the next video we will do the project of how many numbers between these two so for an example we got two and five we got how many numbers between them three four and five so three numbers right 
So, we will know how we can do that with while and for loop. And this is the purpose of the project of what's the number between these two numbers. So, see you in the next project. Okay, and now let's do the project for how many numbers between these two numbers. The first thing we will add here is the script, oh sorry, the HTML. So we can add here as first the uh, the H1 or anything like uh, dev with class first number. Okay, and let's leave the, let's make it first. And let me hear the first number is and then we can make span and give it a class of first number and then we will do the same for the second so we can just copy this one paste it here this one will be second and this one will be second also. Second. And that's second. Okay. And then we can add a dev right here. Dev with class result. The difference between and then we can copy this one and paste and this one is span and let's give it a class of final result okay that's good and now let's do our mission and add the script. So we can add script here. The first thing we can add here is a variable or we can make it constant anything. Let's make it variables. You know, I love using variables. First number equal to 40. And let's make it uh, one. Any number you want, it doesn't matter. The second number to be equal to five. So we got one, two, three, four, five. So the difference and numbers between them is two, three, four, five. Okay, and then we will set a variable i equals zero. And then right now I will show you why we are doing that. And then var total numbers equals zero. This is the initial one, the initial number numbers between them. Okay, and then we will use something here which is called for. So let's add a comment here. For loop. And then we can set here for i equals zero. So i equals zero, this condition is true, right? And also the i is so this signs mean smaller than and this is the bigger than bigger than okay and also the i is smaller than the second number minus the first number so i want something to happen which i plus plus so i want to increase the i plus one and also I want to do something inside. And the something something inside here is total number to be total number plus one. And also the uh, document dot query selector dot the where where uh yeah the final result. Let's copy it from here. Final result. We don't need this dot dot text content to be equal to the total numbers. Okay, this is good. And now uh, we can set here for 
we can copy this one actually first number this one will be for the first number and then again we can copy this one paste it here second number second number okay uh, i want to show you what i did right here but first let's make sure it's working yeah it's working let's just give it here the font size uh sorry the font color is white font color what's the problem font yeah just the color the color is white okay so here we got this okay and then after this part we get the first number the second number and the difference between them but we want to know what happened here so four and then i will make a bracket for i equals zero yeah the i equals zero i will be keep going on and then the i is smaller than so the in at the initial state these two conditions must be true so i equals zero it's true and also the i is smaller than the second number minus the first number which is five minus four which is uh five minus one which is four and then i want two things to happen i want i to be increased by one and also i want the inner code to happen so uh, now when could this happen when this happened the total number will be increased by one so zero will be one and the document that requires a lecture for the final result will be equal to the total number which is now one and then when i go to repeat this loop it will not look at this one okay because we already changed the i variable so it will not look to the first one it will look from here so now it will look for the i is smaller than the second number minus the first number i is now one right and one is smaller than the four so it will keep going continuing and then i to be equal one plus one which is equal two it will go inside the total number will be two and it will be printed inside the final result and the same will happen it will neglect this one the two is smaller than the uh the two is smaller than the uh the four so it will be keep going and then i plus plus the two will be three keep going the total numbers will be three and then it will neglect this one the i equal three right so uh the four is greater than three the i will be four this will be done this will also be four and then i will repeat now the i equal four but four is not less than four so this condition is not true i will not repeat this full loop again this is what happening so now if i make it a smaller than or equal so now this will be five and also i can make it greater but for greater it will not work so let's set this back to this one okay so now this is how we can use the for loop let's make it inside a comment okay and this is the comment now we are done from the for loop in the next video we will know how we can use the while loop to make the same method but with the while so uh, then for the other projects you can use from you can use either for or while what you see is perfect for you and easier for you you can use it so good luck and see you in the, in the while video okay and now this is the time to make it for the while loop so let's go here and the first thing that we will do is to add a comment let's add a comment comment while loop okay and let's add some space here okay that's good and then what we can do as it is part is to add while but we will not try the same as here 
we will make while the i is less than the difference between them. So what we can just do here is i is less than the, the second number minus the first number. And then I want something to happen. So here I make f i equals zero and this to be the second conditions then I want this to happen and also this to happen but in the while loop while the i is less than the difference between them I want something to happen and here we can make the total numbers to be plus plus and the same as for the for loop in the for loop we add the i equal one uh, i equal i plus one when i is less than the second number minus the first number right so we can make the same here to make it do the same function as the for loop and then after this part what we can just do we can just copy this one and paste let's give here it works let's change the numbers something like 13 and something like that so it takes time because the operation is difficult and takes time and now this is the difference between them okay this is good you can hold hold on your calculator and try to do and i am doing that now yeah it's three five four six four two two and the same as here yeah and now it works and I hope you have no problem with the while or the for loop. If you have any problem with either the for or while or anything in this course, you can ask in the Q&A or send me a private message. This is secret. And here we can make it comment. No, we don't need a comment here. Right? Yeah. Okay, so this is working fine. Now we are done from the beginner level. Now we have all the pages we need to move to the intermediate level to build more with JavaScript, to build real projects that we will use in our real career. So, good luck and see you in the intermediate level. Welcome back and here we will build an FPAR project. So this is the FPAR that we will build right here. As you can see from here, we got the toggle button. So here, let's go and build it. The first thing we will add here is the C, uh, sorry, the HTML. So here we can type HTML5. And then we need to connect between this one and the CSS. Okay, and then right here, let's add some HTML code. The first thing we will add here is the nav, the nav tag, or the nav element. And then inside it, the first thing we will add here is a header. So we can add here a dev with nav header. And then inside it here, we will add the image, which is for the logo, this logo. So let's add it here, image with a source of, I don't think I get it from the demo version. We can just get it from here. Copy, okay. Go back to here and paste it inside. Okay, good. Two, five dot in this one, yes. Yes get it here okay let's go and see what we have on this page the icon is very big we can make it to height let's try the 40 or 40 pixels it's okay save reload the page okay it's good here after the header right here let's add the pudding that will toggle when i click on it we can add a pudun and give it a class of nav toggle and inside here we will get the font also if you don't have the experience with font also it's okay you don't need to understand it we will get it from here 
okay this link you can find it in the source code this one copy it font awesome is a great library that we can get some icons from it and here we will make icon with class fas and fa parse let's see what we have here again okay we got it here and also we added some css the css that we don't need to add together i've added it but there's some css that we need to add together to understand the basic of the nav par right here yes from there let's get the html the first thing we will add here is some some list items to this nav so here after the button we can add ul and give it a class of links okay and after this one we can make li and inside this li we can make a with href to nothing and inside here we can just type home so let's see what we have here okay here we got the home and then we can add another one for the about contact us and something like hire us here to be for about this to be for contact contact us and the last one for hire us let's see what we have on this screen okay we got this now let's go to the css that we need to add together from here what we will do here is to add some css code so let's start with adding the links class which is this one right here this ul link links okay the first thing we can add here let's tile to be none so we can remove this uh, this dot here okay it works and then we will make something here we will make height of zero because at the beginning of an f bar when it's closed or collapsed we don't need this so we will set its height to zero height to zero okay but it's still there right because it has overflow of auto so to solve this to solve this problem we need to make it with overflow to hidden overflow to hidden so now it's hidden right it's okay and then we will add the class of the active nav the class that will be added in case if we click on this button so this class will be named as active nav of the bracket and here we will give height for the nav par when it's uncollapsed we will give the height of 8 rem okay so now it's all good and now let's go here this is the time to add some script to make it work we can add some space right here script inside this script here we need to think about what's going on here here there's a button that i want to click and when the button is clicked i want the nav part to be having the appearance in the page right so we need to give a constant one for the button and one for the links and we will add an event listener when i click on this button i want to add or remove which is toggling the class of the active nav and here now the purpose of this nav part is to learn about the toggle okay so here let's make a constant the first one will be for the button and the second one will be for the list we can make a const of the uh, button equal to document dot query selector and this one will be for the nav toggle which is the button and the second one will be for const of let's make it uh, list equal to document dot query selector 
which is equal to the class of links. Okay, and now we need to make four add event listeners. So when I click on this button, I want something to happen, right? So let's make here a button with add event listener. The event is click and I want a function. Open the bracket. So here, the first thing I want to talk about is how we can find the class list that is added to the one that I need. We can make here console log. I'm sure we learned that before. Now, the first thing we can type here is the list. And then the class list. It will list all the classes that inside this list, which is this one. So let's reload the page, go to the console, click on this button. So here we got the links. Okay, so this is the zero and length is the one. Let's try to add some classes right here, like uh, u1. Reload the page, click on it. So here we had we got the links and u1. This can be used for adding classes, removing classes, and even toggling. And the purpose of this one is to know how we can toggle also. So here, when I click again, we got only the links. Okay, so now there's a code that checks whether the this class is there or not. We can go here and make console log. And then here we can make list dot class list. Do you think we need if condition right here? No, we don't need. There's a property in the JavaScript that's called contains. So here contains and then inside here and then right here you are checking whether it has the class of random or not this is what the code means if it contains random we can reload the page from here click here so here it gives you false that means there is no class of random if I try to copy this one put it here and make it something like the links. Reload the page, click here. So here we got true, which means it's there. Okay, and now there's something right here we need to know. What is toggling, what is adding, what's removing right here. Let's give an example. We can give here list dot, list dot, it was but class list, yes class list dot we can move here add as you can see from here add and remove and toggle let's try now to add add okay and then after this part we will give it we don't need to give here a dot because it's already adding a class we cannot add an id from here we can just add classes here we will add active nav so let's check it out okay so here we got it but when i click back here again it doesn't go up because it's add but we don't have the remove right so we can make something here we can make here an if condition so let's delete this one and make if condition and here the if link oh sorry list dot class list class list if it contains the class of the links sorry the class of the active nav so I want to delete it we can make list dot class list dot remove the active nav let's reload the page so it doesn't have yet right but else here I want to add it so we can copy this one and instead of typing it again add okay so let's check out what we did right here so now we got it 
and now it's deleted again and again and again but do i need to type all of that every time i make an fpar or model or even an off canvas no of course not there is something that is called toggle what does toggle means toggle means i if we have the class i will remove it but if you don't have the class i'll give it to you and here let's try for the toggling list dot class list and instead of typing here add or remove we will type toggle and i want to toggle the class of the active nav okay let's try it okay it's working good right uh, i believe we've done this part so we can just comment it okay reload the page click here it's working yeah that's what the toggling means if i have if uh, the, if the list has a class of the active i will remove it but if it doesn't have i will give it and here but there's something here different that i wanted something like the animation the uh, the height will go from here to here with some time right what we can just do here is a part in the css which is transition transition all let's make it to one second to see what's going on here okay it's working good we can just make it to oh point one seconds i think that's enough okay yes that's enough and we can, can we can increase some height from here to 9 rem okay so this is working good and we got no problem with that and this is the nav part we don't focus on the response in design because this course doesn't focus on the css as much as the javascript and this is the nav bar project in the next video, we will put the project of the JavaScript form validation. We will know how we can make a JavaScript form validation in the next project. So, good luck and see you in the next project. Guys, and now we will add for the JavaScript form validation. So, let's add here the JavaScript, sorry, the HTML. Here we can make HTML5. I've added the uh, CSS okay link for the CSS and then right here we can go and here we got a dark blue we can make here the first thing we will add here is the container that will contain everything for the form and then we will give a form and give it a class of form and for the action we can make it to the same page and inside the form, we will add here as first h1 and make java script form validation. Let's check it out first. Okay, here we got this one. And then after this part, we will add the first input. So we can add here dev with the class of input control. And then inside it, we will add a label. And this one will be for the username. And here we can type name. Or we can just make it name. We don't need the, the username, really. Name. And input. We will give it a type of text. Name of name. And then uh, we don't need an ID, I think so. And then after this part, let's add here the dev with class of error. And this will appear in case of we have an error. And then we can copy this one and make it another one for the email and the last one for the password. Here we can make for the email and then right here we can make for the email we will copy this one here and here yes and 
then right here we can make it for the password for password we will copy this one and paste it for the type okay that's good and then the last thing we will add here is the put on the sign up put in with the type of submit this will be the submission put in and sign up okay so here we got the form and we need to add a javascript but we will do that in the next video i want to think about how we can add the form validation i'm gonna give you a hint here is the name the name we got no problem with the name but if the email is not an email it doesn't contain at or doesn't contain dot so there's a problem right so it's not an email and for the password we need to check its length and some data inside it so the first thing we need to check here whether the inputs are empty or not the empty makes a problem right and the email for the add and dot and the password for its length try to do it yourself i think this will be a great challenge for you and in the next video we will do it together good luck with your challenge okay and now let's make it for the javascript the first thing we will do here is to add script dot js and then we will connect between them we will do that here script with the source of script dot js let's go here right now the first thing we will add here is a constant for the form constant equal to a constant form first equal to document dot get element or let's make it choir selector because it's not an id the form okay and then what we have here we need to select here the username or the name and email and the password but they don't have here anything that we can choose with so we can give it here an id of the name we can copy this make it here and here this one will be for the email and the last one will be for the password the lower case okay so let's make it here const with the name we can set it equal to document dot get element by id which is for the name and the second one we can copy this paste it here one for the email and one for the password email copy paste password copy paste okay that's good there's no difference here until now okay so let's add a comment here which is preventing reloading on the submission the same as we did before we can add a comment here preventing reloading on submission okay and what we can do here is form dot add event listener and the one that we need is submit right and then we will make a function a function and the parameters are e of the bracket e dot prevent default and then we will go to the function which is called uh, the validate input but we don't need this now because we don't have it we can just make here a function and call it validate or validated inputs it will be better validated inputs make the parameters empty for now and open the bracket and then we can copy this one and go here let's check whether it's reloading or not it's not reloading but we get a different way to type this what is this way we can make here e which is the parameter which is inside the parameter and then equal 
and this sign which is greater than so this means the function and the parameters is e that's the same as it that this is equivalent to function and the parameter is e okay so this is missing so this is for preventing the reloading on the submission and now okay so what we will do here we will get the element by id of the parent element so if i get the email i for the input of the email i want to get its parent element which is the input control so i can give it this error right so let's do that here we can give here a comment to get the element meant id parent element so i will get the parent element of each one that i need to give it the error or the success and also target its error class and also give it a message moreover add error class and remove the success class and this function will be called add set error which is we can make it to constant so here the purpose of this constant is to get the element by the id of the parents element so we will get one id for the name the second id will be for the email and the third one will be for the password so we will get all in the javascript so we can add their messages and here we can make here constant equal constants to set error equal to function and then we will set two parameters element and message message so what does that mean this means this will be the same as here which is giving the id for an example for each one and this will be a variable and soon we will set a message for each one so for the name we got a wrong name for the email we get a wrong email so this is the same as here the same as this event but this will be a variable that we will use to input the messages okay and here what we can do is constant we can make a constant right here a constant of input equal to element which is this element which is each one got its id parent element so i am using it right here okay and after this part we can make constant for the error and here we will make input dot query selector of error So what did I do here? I got the constant of the error, right? And here the error will be equal input. The input is the element.parent element. I the same I get here and type element.parent element. So I am getting the parent element of each error. So here I get the parent element for this one, which is this one and this one for this one and this one for this one so here i'm getting three one for the name one for the email and one for the password and then after this part we will make error we will change the text content of the error text content what's the problem text content what here i think there is a problem just need to select doesn't want to select okay error dot okay 
text content to be equal to the message that we will set as a variable. Okay, but can I use this way to type this function? Of course, yes. We can delete this one and make it here to be like that. And this will be equivalent to what we typed before. Okay, and as it is part, we can make here add the class of error. So we get a class of error in the CSS that is giving the red color for the error. So here we will add the input control dot class list dot add. I will add the error and remove the success. Uh, sorry, not here. Remove success. Okay, we just don't have any. We don't have any difference right here, right now. Okay, what we will do after this part, but we will do it in the next video, is adding the set success. If you have any problem with what we typed, you can ask in the Q and A. Good luck and see you in the next video. Okay, so now let's add for the set success. So we can make here const set success and make it equal to element. We don't need here a message because for the success, we don't have a message. Open the bracket. And then right here, we can make for the const, we can get the same as here. So we can copy this one and paste it here because it will be the same. Okay. And then the error dot text content will be none. So nothing inside. And here we will do the same, but we will remove the class of error and add the class of the success which gives me the green color success and remove the error okay that's good and here what we need to do at this part let's just add a comment here so it might be easier for you okay and here we can add for the uh, to get the ID, but it's the same. We don't need to get it. It's easy, right? And after this part, what we can do right here is to check if the input is email or not. We got here the constant for the email, so we can just use it here. Okay, so here comes. Let's make it to a valid email equal to email a function of the email make it to equal like that so a function with a parameter of email okay so here what we can do is to go to this file right here and go back here let's paste it and it has a constant of re this code means that i will check everything that is needed for the email you, you basically don't need to understand that okay so this means everything i need to type an email and the email is success here we can make return re dot test string because the email which is typed inside the email is a string it can be numbers, it can be text, so it is a string. And here, email dot to lowercase. So, here what I'm doing here is to converting the email to the lowercase. So, if, we, if the input was uppercase, I will replace it by the lowercase. And this will be the uh, is valid email, which is finding if the input is email or not. This is a constant code. We can add a comment here 
checking if the input is an email. Okay, so now after this part, there's a property in the JavaScript that we can trim all the white space right here. If I type like that, so there's a lot of white space. There's a property in the JavaScript that I can delete the white space with it, which is called trim. We can add a comment here. And inside this comment, we can make for trimming all the white spaces. And right here, we can make a constant with the uh, value date inputs, which is the one is for the uh, here, where? Yes, this one. Okay, so here after this part, we can make it to equal, so we don't need this one again. Equal to. Now, we can make it like that. So but the parameters are empty. And then inside here, we can make const of name value equal to username or name dot value what's the problem here oh uh what's the problem right here i don't know the problem but let's keep going and check out else whether we have a problem or not and then value dot trim okay and then we will do the same for the email and for the password. So we can just paste this here and here. This one will be for the email value. This one will be for the email. And this one, do we have it a name? Yeah, we have it a name. So what's the problem? Okay. Both market. We will check it out later. So here, this one will be for the password. The same as here, the password. Okay, that's good. And then after this part, what we can do here is to add the if the user value is empty and give the error message. But I think this is enough for this video. And in the next video, we will keep going. So good luck and see you in the next video. Okay guys, and here let's keep going and add for the script. So I checked out the problem of this one, which has a function in the JavaScript, which is called name. So we need to change this one by name one or anything we want and make the name one here. So now we got no problem. Okay, so after this part, let's add here a comment giving messages for the user name. So let's check out here if something is happening. Not yet, right? Because we don't have anything here. So let's do that. Now, we can make here if let's add some space as first. Okay. If the name value is equal to nothing. So I want something to happen. I want the set error for the element. The element, where is the element? The element is here. And the message will be user or just name is required okay and after this part what we can do here is else function else we can just make set success and this one will be for the name 
the name okay the name one okay so what we can just do here is to sorry this one will be for the name one so what's going on here i want to show you what's going on here so here the set error the parameters of the set error right here where the set error is element and add message so what's going on here when i recall the function and call two parameters the first one is name one which is the document dot get element by the id and the second one as i told you is a variable it will change with the name or the email or the password so i get the id of the name one which is uh, the name here and it will go to the index.html and search for it and the message will appear for the name and then right here we can check out what's going on here okay it gives me because i got something inside when i click on sign up so here we got name as required and then after this part we can add for the email so we can copy this one right here and paste if email value is equal to nothing i will set for the email and email is required and here we can set for email so we will set the success over the email so here we got required and required when i do that again we got this okay that's true and then after this part what we can do right here is to add for the password so we can make the last one for the password we can copy this one password value and this one will be for the password and the same as here okay so let's check it out what's going on here no i don't need to save it Okay, we're gonna do like that, like that, and like, no, no. Okay, and this is working good, but I noticed a problem right here that we didn't notice together, that the password, we need to check out for the password. And also for the email, we need to add more. For the email right here, if I type anything, it works, right? Because it has the type of the text, we can add here else if function else if so in case if i have more than a case or more than a condition that i want to test i can add if and the second condition can take the else if and then i can type a condition inside like uh, we can type here for we called it what we called it valid email valid email and then after this one, we can make the email value, email value. And then open the bracket and leave it empty for now until we explain what's going on here. So here, if the valid email and the parameter is the value of the email. So here we get a parameter of the email and now its value will be the input of the email. If it's not true, which by this mark, something will happen. I will set the error. Set error. I will set the error for the email and give a message. Email is required. Let's test it now okay so here we got email is required if i add dot it's not enough yet if i add something else it's not enough if i add dot it's not enough yet if i add dot com it is enough okay so now let's make it for the password if we make it for the password else if the password value we're learning about the length right so we don't need to explain it again value dot length if it's less than 10 
I will set the error. So here, oh, this is a password, not an email. Okay, copy this one, paste it here. We can type here password must be greater or equal 10 characters. We can check out what we have right here if I type something like that. So here we got it. And if I left it empty, it will give me password is required. So that's all for the form validation with the JavaScript. If you have any problem, you can ask in the Q&A. Good luck and see you in the next project. Okay, and now we will start our drum kit project. In this video, we will add the HTML to this project. So here we can add HTML5. And then inside the body, but first we need to connect between this one and the style which is the link for the CSS. Here we got all the MP3 that we will use. Make sure you have them before you start this video. So here we can add here a class which is called keys, which is the keys that we will click on the keyboard to play the music. And here we can make dev with something which is called data key. And this will be used in the JavaScript very soon. So here we can make the key for the letter A and give it a class of key. And here we can make for KBD, which is an input A. Okay, uh, this is not necessary. You can make anything you want, okay? So, well, how did I get this code? There is a website which is called, I think it was kcode.info. This one right here. Just click on any, any, anything on the keyboard and give you its key code like A. Here we got its code S, F, D, F, G, and more. Everything, we gotta tap, we gotta enter, and all of that. So we can just add here. The second one will be for the S. Let's make it by the sequence from the keyboard. The S right here is 83. 83. This will be S. And then we got for the D, D which is 68, 68, and here is D. The second one will be for the F, F, and for the F is 70. Then for the G, the G is 71. G. Then we have for the 72, which is the H. Yes, 72 H. And then we have for the, uh, we can make for the J. J, the J has the 74. Okay, so I don't think we need to add more than J. It's enough because we got here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, the same. So we don't need to add more. Okay, and after this part, we will add here an audio. Audio. And here we can add for the source, the first one will get the crash. And for the data k, which is equal to 65. The same sequence is here. We will move from A as D, F, G, H, J. So we can copy this one and paste it for 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This one is for 83. 
in this one for 68 70 uh, 70 not 79 then 71 72 74 and this one will be for kick this will be for the thumb one thumb two Tom three, Tom four, and we got this for the snare. Okay, that's good. And then we got all the audio. So here we got this and we got all the letters, but they don't work yet. Okay, so let's add some seeds add that we need here. We just got a little bit of this test of CSS code that we need to add together to understand what's going on with the code. So here, what we will add for the CSS, we can go down there and add transition. Because when I click on the button on any button right here, I want a, a transition. So let's give a transition of all 0 0.05 seconds. And then the K run. The class that we that we will be added when I click on the button on the keyboard. The transform of scale. Let's make it to one point two. And border color to yellow. Puts shadow five pixels, ten pixels, ten pixels red. Okay. So it doesn't work right now because we, because we didn't add any JavaScript yet. I hope everything until now is good. In the next video, we will add some JavaScript code. So good luck and have fun. Okay, and now let's add some JavaScript code to our project. The first thing we will add here is a script right here. Script. Script, okay. And then inside it, we will make window and add event listener. Here, we will not type click because the click when I click on something inside, but I will click on something on the keyboard. That function is called key down. And then right here, we'll make a parameter with E, open the bracket, and inside here, we can check out something. We can make console log e dot key code. So we can go here up in the console. So when I click on anything, it will get me its code. Just try to click on the keyboard or on anything you want. Okay, that's good. So it will get me the thing that I clicked on. Okay, that's good. And then after this part, we can make a constant. This constant will be for the audio, which is equal to document dot query selector. Now, there's something that we need to do here. Whenever I use or wherever or any, whenever I use the data queue or something like that, I will not type these quotations. I will type pack ticks, which is this one. Okay, and I'll show you why. Right here, I want to choose the audio, but we get a lot of audio. I want to know which one I want to choose, right? So I will type audio. And the audio that contains the data key okay but we got a lot a lot of numbers for the data key i want to be dynamically using the numbers to do that we can use two double quotations like that and inside we can make a dollar sign and then after the dollar sign open these two brackets and inside we can make e dot key code 
Okay, so now we are done from the audio. We want to make the same, but for the uh, the key, which is this key. So we can just copy this one. The syntax. Okay, this one will be a constant for the key. And also we can add a class here. So here we did the same. Whenever I click, it will get me the one that I need. So this one will be printed the same but here so it will go there and find the one that i need so here we can add here audio dot play and then right here let's see what we have on the screen when we reload what's the problem why it doesn't work let's open if we inspect and see what's going on here with the console log unexpected error with oh we don't have an equal here this is the problem okay and also we can we can make sure what's going on here by copying this one and paste it here by making the audio and making the same for the key Let's delete this for now. Save, reload the page. We can click on A. So it's getting me the key for the key class and for the audio, the same as here. If I get something like P, it will give me null and null, which is not there. Okay, so we don't need this anymore. Let's make audio dot play. So this line will play the audio because we got here the audio, which has the data key of what we clicked on. And then it will get me the the source that I want and play it. So let's see what we have right here. Yeah, it's working. So here, what we can do. Yeah, it's working. Right. Okay, but letter G is not working. So we can just go here and see what the G is. I don't need this ad. G is 71 so we got the G for 71 but after the 70 we got it wrong right here okay now G is working okay and that's good now we will add the class of the key run we can add here key dot class list for add and we will add for the key run okay so let's go here let's try to make the screen larger uh, i think we typed something wrong here where is the a let's make the screen larger yeah a is here so now we are giving it the key run okay that's good i think we can go here uh box shadow not box side that was a problem so we we'll give here, it's working. And here we can give it uh, the border color. Let's try it again. But there's a problem right here that we want when the transition is end, I want it to go back to its original position, which is original class, which is this one. So I want to remove the class of key run with the transition is end and also there's something that try to click on a many times it doesn't work properly so it needs to wait until the uh, audio is done and then i can play it again so we need to make these two but we will do the first one in the, the next video which is how to make when I click several times it will work for several times and i don't need to wait until it's done we will do that in the next video. So good luck and see you in this video. Okay, now we are back. And in the next, in uh, sorry, in this video, we will know how we can click several times on the button and the audio will play. In the JavaScript, when I play an audio, it will wait until it's over, until the audio is finished. But there is a property in the JavaScript which is called current time so we can make here audio dot current time 
equal to zero. So what's going on here? When I click on would you play and then it will say the current time is zero but it will not stop the audio it will just make for the javascript i i don't need to wait until i click again to make it work but in real life the audio will not stop this is just a code for the javascript javascript i cannot stop the audio from this one you told me to make the current time is zero but I cannot stop the audio. What I can do is to set the time to zero. So we can click whenever you want, but I will not stop the audio. Let's try it now. Like. So as you can see from here, we don't need to wait. Like that. Okay, good. And now this is that what we need. In the next video, we will know how we can get this pack without this KUrun class. We will know how we can delete the uh, this class. So I'm gonna give you a hint if you wanna try. There is a function for add event listener that can be used when the transition is ended. So when the transition is end, I wanna make something. Like the click we used before the click. When I click, I want function to happen. The same as here, when the transition is end, I want a function to happen. That's what we will do but in the next video. Good luck and have fun. Okay, so now let's do what we need to do, which is when the transition is end, I will remove the addition. I want to tell you something right here. What if I go to the console and type something like, let's make it here as first and then we can copy it, document dot query selector all and we will select all of the class of key let's copy this one and see what we will get here this is oh i cannot copy and paste okay document dot query selector all and i will select all for the key so what we have here, it gets me all the key. And that's what I need to do right here, is select all the keys. And here we can make const of keys. And this is because we will get for each key. And then here we get for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And it gives me the length of 7. And then we can go and make a function which is called for each. So we can get keys for each. And we will make for each key. So each key will get its ID. Okay, so here right now, we'll make dot key. And for this key, we will add event listener. And the event listener right here, because I want to end the when the transition is end, it is called transition end. And then I want to go to the function which is called transition remove. Okay. And then we can just add a function here which is called function transition we can copy it from here remove for e okay so i want to show you what's what happened right here so here keys for each everyone has id right and we have here length of seven so that what happens here is oh you type for each so i will make a function one for the zero one for the one one for the two one for the three one for the four one for the five and one for the six but we can compress all of that in just one word for each so i don't need to make for each single one okay that's the game and here the key is the parameter 
and I will change something in the key add event listener transition end so when the transition is end and then I want to go to the function which is called transition remove and the E here which is the input that I put from the uh, keyboard itself so we can go here and make console dot log e dot property name and what is property name property name it's getting me all the property names in the css like it got transition transform background color and all of that let's try to reload the page with the a so when i click on the a it gives me oh in the a you got pour the put on pour the left pour the right color pour the top color put shadow and transform and when i click on g it will give me the same and then if I click on O, it will give me audio is null because it's not there. It's passing, th it's passing through here as first. And the E is not there. It's not defined from here. So it will give me an error. Okay, that's the game. And then what I want to do here is to go here. Okay, we cannot type here E dot class list remove. This will make a problem and it will not work. In that case, we can just type this. So this will replace E right here and it will do the same function. So for the class list, I cannot use E. So the uh, what I can use is this class list remove. I will remove the key run. Okay, so let's reload the page right here and click on. Let's make the screen larger as first. Okay. Yes, it's working. S is working, B is working, F is working, G is working, F, H working, and G working. Let's make a test. Click all together. My fingers are small. The only way and we got no problem with it, just because we typed several missions, so it's getting error. Now, it's working. Okay, we got no problem with this part, and this project is working perfect. If you have any problem, you can of course ask in the Q&A. And if you have any problem with any video, we can record this video again for you. So, in the next video, we will create a new project. So good luck and see you in the next project. Okay, and now in this video we will start for the strong password checker. So the first thing we will do now is to add the HTML. So we can type here HTML5 and let's connect to the CSS. Okay, and then after this part what we will do, we will add a container that we will contain the content and here we will add a dev with class of header and of course you know what background color i chose the dark blue and here we can make for the password checker does it work yes it works and then after this part we will make a form and the action will be the same page and then we will make input with a type of password and then we will make on key up. On key up means when I click on the input. So when I click on the input, I want the function of run to happen. And then we can add a placeholder, enter a password. Okay, so here, okay, it's working good. Uh, which gives here the green peg, uh, the green peg ground, or the green border, it's from the CSS, it's not from the JavaScript. Okay, and after this part, we will add pen and give it a class of show and show. Okay, and right here, we will add a dev with a message. And that's good. 
and after this dev with a message we can add some script but i prefer to do that in the next video now we are done from the html in the next video we will add for the javascript good luck and see you in the next video okay and now let's add the script for our project the first thing we will do is to go here and make script inside the script the first thing we need to specify is the constants the first one will be for the input equal to document dot query selector we can delete this one query selector and the input and the second one will be for the message we can just copy this one and paste it twice this one for the message we can copy it dot message and this one will be for the show show will change the type of input from the password to text when i click on it okay that's good and then after this part what we can do we can add some javascript code again so let's add here this which is the end of the line let's add some space okay so we will get this from here and i'll tell you what this means okay let weak password this will indicate the, the weak password and this here means i got an array from a to z this is a constant uh, variables in case if i want to check the password so here is an array from a to z so if my password just contains alphabets it will be considered as weak password and here this indicates the numbers so if my password contains a number it will be considered as medium password and for this one if my password contains any simple it will be considered as a strong password okay and right here what we can do is to add more javascript code we will add a function of the run okay and now let's move to the main purpose of this project the main purpose of this project is to learn how we can add if else if and more with uh, advanced way so in this project we will focus on using the if condition in advanced way we can make as first if the input dot value is not empty so i want something to happen okay and then i want the message dot text content to be equal to your password is weak so let's reload the page and see what we've got when i type anything yeah your password is weak and it works fine okay and after this part we need to add more let's add for the show we need to change the style of the show it has in css the display of none we need to make it here with display of plug so we can make here show dot display uh sorry show dot style dot display that's how we can change the css in the javascript the thing that we want to change and then the style that i want something to happen in the child and the style i want to change something in the style what do you want to change i want to change the display and of course i can change the border color the background color and all of that but in our case we want to change the display i want to make it to block so let's take it out okay we got the show here just because we don't focus on the responsive design but when we make it larger it's good okay now it's not empty but we need to make an another case right here but we don't really need else if right here we can make if the input so here we got and so we will make and if the input 
dot value dot length is smaller than or equal three and the uh, input dot value dot match the weak password okay we need to understand what's going on here so here input the value we don't have any problem with these two but match weak password match weak password that it has anything that's inside the weak password which is the alphabets so here we got from a to z match is i is i matching it with anything with anything inside this uh, array and then after this part we will make or so let's make for the or so they are all inside one bracket okay this condition with the or is inside one bracket input dot value dot match match for the uh, medium password we will make it for the medium password and the last one for match for the strong input dot value dot match and this one will be for the strong password okay we want to understand what's going on here then there's two conditions this is the two conditions for the end this is considered as one condition we can put it in one bracket for itself and the rest is considered as a condition we just need to up the bracket to avoid getting error okay this is the first condition and that's all the second condition okay so the first condition contains if the length is smaller than or equal three and the second condition uh, contains if if it matches anything inside the weak password or matches anything in, inside the medium password or matches anything inside the strong password i want to find something to happen if both cases are true so what do you want to happen what i want to happen is give the message dot text content to be changed and i want to change it with your password is too weak your password is too weak so we don't need this anymore let's take it out let's delete and type anything yeah your password is too weak and then after this part we will make else if else if so and here for the else if let's open the bracket to avoid making mistakes or getting some errors my pad okay so we need to type something inside here what we want to type inside here is some conditions of course so let's make the first condition the first condition if the input dot value is uh, of length is greater than or equal to six so this is the first condition and then we will use the and and the second conditions uh, the second condition will contain some or so the first or is for the uh, input dot value so okay the input the value dot match and then for the weak password so if it contains a weak password and or we can make it yeah let's make it with and and it also contains something from the medium so here we can open the bracket we can open the bracket here we can make this all together right here okay like that and like that okay 
and here we can copy this one and make it for the median okay so this is the first case and inside the second case there is this one and then after this part we will make an or so let's make an or here after this medium so here it's for this bracket now this one this one or what yes so here we will make an or so let's make our or right here i just want to make sure we did it right so this one is for this one yes i believe and let's make them all the second condition to be all inside one bracket so let's make it from here okay or the input let's make it here this condition to be all inside one bracket input dot value we don't need the length here what we need to do here is match the medium match medium password okay this is for this one and and it also contains something from the strong input dot value dot match something from the strong password okay and at this part we will make an another or so this is all inside one we can make an another or right here or the we can make this all inside one bracket also input dot value dot match will match something from the weak password weak password or we can copy this one now and make it for the strong password okay and that's good and then we need to make something inside here it gives me a problem what's the pro do we have a problem yes tells me we got a problem what's and now we don't have a problem okay so now we will change the text content of the message message dot text content to be equal to your password is medium so now let's add for the strong we cannot add else if else if else if else if instead we can add another if adding else if again will make a problem so here do not use else if many times use it just once okay so here we can get this condition and we will just add the condition of oh we can copy all of that copy and paste the condition that we will add is for the strong so here we can make input dot value dot match for the strong password so i want so something to happen right okay so here what i want to happen let's make this to be eight message content tp4 your password is strong let's see what we have on the screen right here when we go from the beginning okay so here we can type anything your password is too weak let's try it a number yeah and now let's try it at a simple your password is strong it's working fine okay so now everything here is working good we just need to set some things right here that when the empty when the input is empty i want to make this to none again and uh, set this to none so we don't have a message here when the input is zero or empty 
we got here the if condition we can make else so here we can copy this one as first and make it to none and the message dot text content to be equal to none so let's see what we got here let's try to make the screen larger it's not responsive okay so in here we got nothing let's try to type anything your password is too weak and then that's all aspects let's try to type a number so here we get a medium and when we type here your password is strong yeah it's working fine the last thing that we need to do is to make the show button work but we will do that we will do that in the next video so good luck and see you in the next video okay and now the last thing we want to do for this project which is changing the type of the input when i click on show so this can be added if the input is not empty because it has display of clock when the input is not empty so it will be useful when the input is not empty so here we can make show and instead of adding uh, add event listener we can just make on click and then we can make it equal to function so when i click i want a function to happen this is equivalent to the add event listener click and the function and then right here if the input dot type is equal to password then i want to hear the input dot type to be equal to text and then show dot text content is equal to height and also we will change its color show dot style dot color to be equal to let's make it green or let's make it red i think red will be better and here the else condition else we can copy this one paste it here and then else the password type will be uh, the type will be password this will be show and this will be black okay so let's check out what's going on here let's make the screen larger okay when we type a your password is weak and when i click here yes and now it's working fine let's test it right now okay when i type anything your password is weak but when i add a number your password is medium but now when i add a simple your password is strong now we are done from the project of strong password checker in the next video we will move to the parallax hover effect this will be useful for us very 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 useful and we will build a landing page and this page contains this part okay so now we are done from this project in the next video we'll move to the project i told you about good luck and see you in that project hey and i welcome you to this project the parallax hover effect project so now what we will do here is to add the html and in the next video we will add for the javascript so we can make here html5 connect between this file and the css and right here we will make for the container and inside the container we will make the card container and this one that will contain the images the background and the image and here we will make card and then right here we can make image with the source the first one will be images and we can make this one for the background one and give it a class of pack ground and then we will add an image with a class of person and then the source will be oh we get a source here already images and person one 
and then we can copy this one and see what we have here first okay good we will just change this one to be two and this one will be static this one person two person person three okay so now i don't want to save okay so here we got this one now we are done from the html in the next video we will add the javascript so good luck and see you in the next video hey and now let's make for the javascript this is the original project the demo project as you can see from here we got this with it changing according to the position of the mouse and we need to think about it we need to find something in the javascript that indicates the position of the mouse in the screen in the window of the web page this is called page x page y and page z but in our case we will just use px and p and page y so we can make the screen smaller we can add a script here and for this one we can type inside here the first thing that we will type inside is for the uh, yes the constants const and the first one will be for the container which is equal to document dot choir selector choir selector for the container class okay let's open our this product and the second one will be for the person so we can just copy but we need here choir selector all because we got uh, more than one person const person equal to document dot choir selector all for the person okay so here we can make document dot party dot add event listener and here i want when i hover so when i mouse over the party which is equivalent to hover in the css and then we will make parameters of e because we got different images and backgrounds okay so what we will do here is to make let x or we can make it variable variable x equal to but we can make something different right here console log log uh, sorry we got e here because we will change the position of the mouse so each position will get its number so we need e here to not make it constant here we can make it e dot page x in console log also e dot page y so let's see what we have here when i open the console inspect okay so as you can see from here it's changing whenever i go here whenever i go to anywhere it changes right as you can see from here okay good and then after this part we need to make an equation an equation that will move the images we just need to make this smaller again to see what's going on here okay what we want to do here is to make an equation the equation that moves the images the whole container we don't need this console law again now we know how we can locate the mouse and here we can make variable x equal to window window is the whole window this window is a whole window window dot inner width so now this is the inner width of the window so this is the width let's say it uh, 500 pixels and now it's different so here the inner width is different we can make it also with console log but it's okay right now we don't need now we can make it over 
2 is divided by 2 or divided by any number we want. We can make it divided by uh, 3, for example, and then minus the e dot page x over, let's make it 420. I want to tell you something. This is a random equation. You don't need to make the same equation. You can make any equation you want. And V R V A R Y. We can copy this one and paste this. There's a bracket here. And this one will be for the inner height. So we have inner height and the inner width. Page Y. Okay. And then what we want to do here, we want to change the style of the container we want to change the transform to add rotate x y and translate x y so what we can do here container dot style dot transform we can make it equal to yes it's equal to this one because we are using inside the dollar because we don't because we got it for a variable we will type y inside and y is variable so we just need this back tricks to make it with the dollar and the y for the variable and also for the x so here we can make rotate x to p for the uh, the dollar, where is the dollar sign? Yeah, it's here. Okay. And inside here, we can make negative y multiplied pi 2. And then here, like that, degree. And then we can make for rotate y, we can cut, we can just copy this one. Rotate y, and this will be x. And then we can make for the translate y, translate y, the dollar sign, like that. Okay, this to be x multiplied by 2. But it tells me we got a problem here. So what's the problem? Yeah, I think it got a problem. There's a problem within this one, so we need to check out this problem right here. This bracket, yeah, now we solve this problem. And this to be pixels, because the translate is with pixels. We just need to make this uppercase, the Y. And then we will copy this one and paste it here. This to be X. And this to be y. Okay, so let's check out what's going on here. Okay, it doesn't work. I guess we get a problem here. Okay, okay, we need to check out what's what happened right here. Okay, so let's make this let let instead of variable. Okay, it doesn't work yet. Okay, we need to check out what we typed inside. Rotate X with, okay, the dollar sign, negative Y multiplied by two. Rotate Y with the dollar, negative X minus two. Okay, degree. I think, yeah, I got it, here, this bracket to be here, I believe this is the problem, and for the translate, the same, sorry, my bad, okay, so I hope this solves the problem, yeah, so now we got it. Okay, and this is working fine right now, and also when we make the screen larger, it's working very good. We just got an amazing range, we need to make it just a little bit down. So let's make this to be 30, this to be 30. Let's try it now. This is better, right? 
you can change it if you want okay so after this part we need to make four these persons so here we can go after this line and call again the function which is for each as we did before so person dot for each for each one for each person i will make a function with a parameter of person because each one got its id as you saw before in the console log equal so for each one i want a person dot style dot transform equal to uh we can use the transform and translate from here we can just make these two okay and use transform and translate from here and paste we can just make it different we can make translate y with y and translate x with x let's see what's going on here i believe the person is not working so we need to check out the person right here okay so let's check out what's wrong with the person person for each person okay okay the person is not working so we get a problem with the person we need to check out what the problem right here for this person okay i am thinking about the problem we can go back to this part and see if the problem with this one we can copy this one here and paste reload the page so there's a problem with the person itself and we need to check out this problem let's try to copy this one and paste it here okay save the pack reload no there's a set of problem with the person okay i'll check it out and go back to you try to check it out also you good luck okay i checked out the code and found the problem so there's a problem here that we cannot use the same as we did at the end of the last video because here the person we need to make for the array something for the array so for the each person it will get its own styling for the css inside the javascript so we can make person we can make two ways person dot for each and i will call and here we will make person and a function with a parameter of person open the bracket right here and make here person dot style dot transform and make it equal to and let's get it from here let's get that translate from here actually we don't need to rotate and then we can make this to be x and this to be y so now it's working now we need to explain what's going on here so the person what is the main purpose of the person here and also we can replace by that in this we want to know what's going on here it will recall the person so for each call person so each person has its own id right because we got uh, the selector uh, the query selector all so each one will get its id it's the same as i got for uh zero one two because we got three right so zero for the first one one for the second one and two for the third one that's what happened here that when i call person i will see what the id inside the array or the length inside the array so this is zero so oh i got zero so i will create a new array and make it zero and then one and two this is similar but the array the content of the array will be hidden and also we can make it in a different way by typing person 
so the proof works. But for a new information, we can just make it with this one. So here it's working. To see it working better, we can make it this multiply pi 2. And this is multiply pi 2. But to make it to a different way, we can make this to be y and this to be x. So now it's working and we can see it working. Okay, so this is good. If you want to apply this one, uh, this uh, effect once more, you can apply it on text instead of images. It can be also applied to text. So this is done. In the next video, we will move to more advanced project than those. So good luck and have fun.